What's going on everybody? Welcome to part 5 of the Python for Finance tutorial series. In this video, what we're going to be doing is grabbing the S&P 500 data, basically all of the companies that comprise the S&P 500. And at, at its most basic level, this isn't exactly how the S&P 500 is calculated, but just to keep things simple, it's generally the top 500 companies by market cap. And market cap is just the value of that company. Basically, the value of that company, again, is super basic. The, um, the number of outstanding shares times the price. And that gives you the value of the company. So the S&P 500 is the top 500 most valuable companies. So, uh, so first of all, where might we get a list? So like, for example, like in, in practice, you're going to have to find your own lists. So yes, if you want to use the S&P 500, you could just follow this tutorial, but chances are you might have your own list or um, something else entirely. Who knows? So the first thing I'm going to do is just come over to Google and I'm just going to say S&P 500, yeah, companies, company. Well, I don't even need to type. Google knows what I'm asking. So let's go here for the Wikipedia list of the S&P 500 companies. Fantastic. So there we have a list. I would wager this probably gets updated relatively quickly as that list does get updated. Cool. So we can now view source and basically let's view source and let's look for 3M company. So control U to view the source. Uh, and now let's find 3M company. Okay, so it's in table data. Uh, and basically what we're looking for is the start of this table. Can we possibly find table? Great. So what we're looking for is this. So, <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to use a, um, a web scraping library called Beautiful Soup. You'll see some of the basics here. If you want to know more, I have a tutorial series on Beautiful Soup. So if you want to know more about Beautiful Soup, go, you can go to Python Permanent, search Beautiful Soup, and you'll find it. So we're going to look for this table, and then every table has some rows and table data. And the first thing will be table headers, which we're not interested in. But we're in, we are interested in all the table data. We can go here, and sure enough, between basically the first table data tags, we can see that's where the ticker is. So we can just pull apart this table. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to be starting clean here. So I'm going to import BS4 as BS just because basically any version of any beautiful soup, basically the whole reason we import it just as BS is for BS5, BS4, whatever. Someone could take sample code and that's the only change they need to make. They don't need to keep changing 4s to 5s or 3s to 4s and so on. Import BS4, that's beautiful soup. Import pickle uh, and then import requests. We're going to be using Pickle. Again, I've got a tutorial on Pickle, but basically what it does is it serializes any Python object. So you can basically just save any object, like a variable and so on. And what we're going to do is we're going to save the S&P 500 list. That way, every time we want an S&P 500 list, um, we're not going to need to go back to Wikipedia and hit Wikipedia. So now, define save SP500 uh, tickers, tickers. What are we going to do here? So basically what we're going to do, we're going to start off by just getting the source code for Wikipedia. It's going to look just like this. So we're going to use requests for this. So we're going to say the response equals request, whoops, requests dot get. And then we're going to just take this link here. So not view source. We're going to take this link, copy that, paste. Uh, there we go. Now we're going to say soup. So soup is going to be a beautiful soup object. So bs.beautiful soup. <clears throat> it's going to be soup that comes from the response. And since we're using requests, we're going to say response.txt. So response.txt is the text of the source code, OK? Um, so then we're going to specify a parser. We actually probably don't need to, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. So the AlexML parser. Um, you probably, I can't remember if this comes. You might have to pip install. LXML. Let me run it without LXML, and let's just make sure. Let's just see if it's absolutely necessary. Table. Uh, so this will be table data. So now to use Beautiful Soup to find certain things, we can just say soup.find. What do we want to find? We want to find table, but not just every table, because there in this page, um, I don't think there's any more tables. That's not a table. There might be some like under here though, or something. No. This could be a table. Who knows? Um, but on a lot of Wikipedia pages, there's actually a lot of tables. 
um, and they might have a very specific class. Chances are they'd all have the wiki table sortable. So we're gonna see if we get lucky though. So we're gonna specify a specific class. This on this page actually is probably not necessary, but let's just just to be safe, we're gonna say <clears throat> we want all tables of class. Uh, it was wiki table and it was sortable. So that's the table we're interested in. Then we're gonna specify an empty tickers list, and then we're gonna iterate through this table. So for row in table dot find all uh, tr for each tr is table row so for each table row and then we're gonna say one onward because that first row remember that's a table those are table headers so it's like the titles of the, the the rows or the titles of the columns rather so here table header it just tells you SEC filings ticker symbol and so on we don't actually need that so colon so the ticker equals row dot find all and in each row it consists of table data that's each column basically and we just want that first, the zeroth column. So, right, that was the, the most left column here. Those are all of our tickers. So we want the zeroth, right? That's the first. Uh, so that's the ticker. Uh, we need to specify dot text because it's a soup object right now. We want it to just be like string for Python. So dot text and then tickers dot append ticker. Once we have that, we've got a full tickers list, SP500. Let's go ahead and save it with open and we'll call this sp500 tickers.pickle. We're gonna open with the intention to write uh, bytes as f pickle dot dump. We're gonna dump tickers f. So we're dumping the tickers to file f. So it's just gonna save that. And then finally, uh, we'll return tickers, but hopefully in most cases, we'll just load this pickle. So now let's go ahead and just run at save sp500 tickers and let's just, just for now, we'll print tickers just so we know if it works or not. So save, uh, run it, let me pull it over here, whoops. Um, I said response.txt somewhere, here we go, text, try again, there we go. Okay, so now we have the entire SMP500 list, big list, I also think I saw a warning Let's see. It was about the uh, the parser. It looks like, for some reason, I'm not able to go all the way over to the edge. There we go. Warning. Yeah. So it wants me to just go ahead and pass LXML. So I'll go ahead and do that. But like I said, you might have to actually install LXML. Um. So yeah. Um. But I guess I'll pass it in there anyway. Cool. Okay, so anyways, that's how we're going to get the tickers. I'm going to go ahead and stop it there. And in the next tutorial, we'll kind of continue working on this because we've got a lot of things that we're trying to do here. <laughs> uh, we got to get the tickers. Then we're going to get all the data for all the tickers. Then we got to compile all that data into one data frame and start doing analysis and so on. So we've got lots of stuff to look forward to. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever up to this point, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial.